Hello and welcome back. Now since we are working on clusters, today we will understand one of the important concepts which is user defined function on Spark. User defined functions are certain functions which are written by a user for a specific purpose. It can be a domain specific code or a generic code, but it should do some process that is defined in the logic of that function. We will also see how Spark works with UDF. And when we talk about UDF, there are certain demerits of a Python UDF. We will also look into that. Now, before we can start with our coding, let's understand how Spark works with Python UDF. Now, consider we have a Spark application running where we have a driver and we are running this program on a cluster which has two nodes, node 1 and node 2. Once we write a Python UDF to process our logic, Spark copies this Python UDF to individual worker nodes. And once this is available, Spark spins up a Python process. Once this process is ready, the data is now serialized in the format that Python can understand. And the data is processed row by row. And once this data is processed, the results are reverted back to the JVM process, upon which the JVM reports back to driver with the result. Now, if you can see, this Python process also resides in the same node where the JVM resides. Again, since the Python process is separate of that of the JVM process, the JVM process does not have control over this Python process. Thus, Spark does not have control over this Python process. If this Python process grows in size and exceeds the memory limit, we will run out of memory on the node and there will be a out of memory error. So, if we try to understand the demerits here, first the data needs to be serialized and deserialized. Next, the costly Python process has to be spin up. And once this Python process is up, the data needs to be processed row by row. Now, we know that writing a Python UDF can be expensive. Then what is a solution for this? The first solution would be not to write a UDF, rather utilize higher order functions. If that is not possible and we need to write a logic, then the UDF needs to be written in Java or Scala. Once we register this Java or Scala UDF, that is already present in JVM, we don't need to spin up this Python process and we can reuse this Java or Scala UDF within the Python code itself. Let's get into code and write our first UDF. I am in my Jupyter Lab environment. My Spark standalone cluster is already up and running. We have two workers which are having eight cores each and 6.7 GB of memory. Now, to run my code on the cluster, I am pointing my master to the standalone cluster. And I have done three config properties. The first one being Spark executor cores, which implies each executor will have two cores. And the maximum number of cores this application can use is six. That implies if we have six cores and we have two cores each executor, we will have three executors each with two cores. And the memory for each executor would be 512 MB. Let's generate our Spark session first. Okay, my Spark session is up and ready. Let's go and refresh our Spark UI. Let's go to the executor tab. Great, we can see three executors up and running, each with two cores. So total, we have six cores. If we go to our cluster and refresh the page, we get one application, which is having three executors, each with 512 memory and two cores, in which one worker node is hosting two executors and one is hosting only one. Let's go back to our code. For this example of UDF, we will read employee data. We already have our employee data in the output location. And this is the schema that we will use to read the employee data. Let's create our employee data frame and check how many number of partitions are present for that employee data. Great, our employee data frame is ready and the data is read in four partitions because the output for get num partitions is four. For this example, we will try to create one column for bonus, which will be 10% of the salary. Now, to do that, what I have done is I've written a function which will take in salary and it will return the 10% of that salary, which is the bonus. So I've named this function as bonus. Now, to create a UDF from our function, we need to import UDF from PySpark SQL functions module. Let's do that. Okay, now our name of the UDF would be bonus UDF. And we will write UDF and we will put the name of the function, which is bonus. Now, before I can run this, let me run the function first and I'll generate the UDF now. Now, we have our UDF up and ready. To add a column, we know we can use with column. Let's do that. We will write emp dot with column and we will create a new column called bonus. And we will use our UDF to generate that column. I'll write bonus 
UDF and I'll pass the salary column. Now, I'll just write so to view the data. Let's run this. Awesome. We can see a bonus column created, which is almost the 10% of the salary. So, our UDF is working fine. Let's go to the Spark UI to view what has happened in the background. I'm in my Spark UI. I'll just go to the Jobs tab. If you can see, we have four tasks running for this source string. One in a separate job and three other in a separate job. If I expand one of them, let's go to the stage. If I scroll down, you can see it has taken too much time in the deserialization. This is because it is deserializing the data which the Python UDF has written. Now, how do we see that Spark has generated a Python process to process this data? Let's do one thing. Let's go back and add a slip in this function so that it is up and running while you go back and investigate. To do that, I'll import the time function and I'll just put a slip command. So I'll write time dot slip and I'll write 10 so that after each record processing, it will slip for 10 seconds and we can go back and see what is happening in the background. Let's run the sales again. Now, before I run this show command, let me connect to one of the worker node so that we can see what is happening in the background. We have connected to one of the worker node. I can write PA AUX to see what are the running process. You can see there are Java process running, but there's no Python process running right now in the worker node. Let's go back and run this command now. So this command is up and running now. Let me go back and again write PS AUX. You can see the Python process has started. So this is the Python process that Spark has initiated in order to process the data using the UDF that we have written in Python. And this is a bigger demerit because the data needs to be serialized and deserialized while using this Python process. Now, this bonus UDF is available for the data frame API. What if we need to use with Spark SQL or Spark SQL expressions? For this, we need to register it, right? So for registering, we need to write spark.udf.register and we need to provide a name for that UDF. So I'll write bonus SQL UDF, which will be available for the Spark SQL. And I'll give the name of the function, which is bonus, which we have written this bonus. And we'll have to provide the data type which it will return. So the data type that it will return will be double because we have 0 0.1 multiplying with the integer salary. So the return will be a double. Great. Now, before I rerun this register, let me remove this slip command. Let's run the cells again. Okay. Our Spark UDF is registered. Now, to see it in the expression, let me bring in the EXPR. To do that, I'll write. Okay, now we have imported the EXPR method. Let's use that to see it in the Spark SQL function. I'll write EXPR and within funs, within double quotes, I'll write the whole function. I'll remove this salary double quotes and I will add that Rona SQL UDF. Same solution. But now this is available for Spark SQL. You can use Spark SQL to write this UDF directly in string methods. Since this Python UDF is expensive, it is always recommend to use only if it is at most necessary. Now, we can do this bonus without using a UDF. We can just use expressions. So let's do it with expressions. So I'll write EMP dot with column. And again, I'll name the column as bonus. And I'll write this expression, which would be salary into 0.1. Now, if I run the so, you will see same result. But for this, you will not have Python processes created because this is happening within the JVM itself, which is the executor. Now, what if it is very necessary for you to write a UDF? You can't avoid it. In that case, you need to write that UDF in Scala and you need to register that UDF like this in Scala. Once that UDF is registered, that UDF will be available to use in any language. Then you can write this in expressions to get that UDF and the work done that is required for that column or the UDF. So this was all for today. I hope you understand how we can write user defined functions and how the Python UDF can be an expensive process. We also saw in the background how Python processes are created a Python UDF. Make sure to like and subscribe and feel free to put your comments down so that I can improve my content. Keep learning, keep growing, keep sharing.